Last semester we covered numerous fundamental principles. This semester we'll be delving more deeply into chemical reactions. In other words, I'll be teaching you how to convert numerous starting materials into various products using specific reaction conditions. Now you may ask, why in the world would we care about learning so many different reactions? As it turns out, organic chemistry is the art of assembling molecules. The vast majority of all medicines used today, even those that are made by nature, are actually synthesized by organic chemists. Why? Because for most medicines and other useful natural compounds, we couldn't go to nature and obtain a sufficient quantity to use as a medicine without ravaging nature. So what do we do? We organic chemists come up with ways of synthesizing those same molecules artificially in the lab using organic chemistry. Furthermore, there are many unnatural molecules that also have many useful properties that can only be made by using organic chemistry. Synthesizing a molecule is much like playing with Legos. For those of you who are like me, that is, who have experience playing with Legos, you'll recognize that the final constructed product, in this case a farmer with two animals and a watering trough, is not what you see when you open the box. So how do you get the final product? Well, you follow the instructions and assemble that product one step at a time using simple building blocks. Assembling molecules is very similar. However, instead of adding pieces by using our hands, we have to use chemical reactions. In the case shown here, the research group I was in as a graduate student wanted to assemble this molecule, which is called esnaproxen. It's an anti-inflammatory medicine known by various commercial names, including Aleve. To make this drug, which, like our Lego playset, is somewhat structurally complex, we began with Molecule 1, which is cheap and commercially available. By treating it with these reaction conditions, which you really don't have to understand yet, we converted Molecule 1 into Molecule 2. Just like adding pieces to our growing Lego playset with our hands, we then converted Molecule 2 to Molecule 3 using these reaction conditions. Using subsequent chemical reactions, we converted 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and 5 to our final target, which was this anti-inflammatory drug, esnaproxen. And how, once again, did we add pieces to our growing molecule? By using chemical reactions. That's what organic chemists do. I guarantee you that there probably isn't a single human on Earth who isn't a beneficiary of organic chemistry, even though most of us are completely ignorant of that fact. Nearly every medicine, every synthetic fabric and material, every food preservative and flavoring, as well as many pesticides and countless other substances we use in our daily lives were invented and developed through the use of organic chemistry. With that said, we now launch into chapter 16, which will cover numerous reactions of substituted benzenes. As we learn these reactions together, I want you guys to keep in mind the big picture. Why do we care about learning so many reactions? Because once we master these reactions, we can use them to assemble virtually any useful molecule we can imagine. This slide shows a list of all the things you should be able to do after studying chapter 16. Because I anticipate that you can read as well as I can, I'm not going to read these bullet points to you. Instead, I'll let you read them for yourself as desired by pausing the video now. If not, then let's keep going. To begin, I want to remind you of a reaction we covered back in chapter 12, the treatment of an alkylated benzene with NBS. I wish to remind you here that the word alkyl in organic chemistry refers to any chain of carbons and hydrogens. In this example, I have a three carbon long chain called a propyl group attached to my benzene ring. Thus, my alkylated benzene is a benzene that has an alkyl chain, in this case a propyl group dangling off of it. So here's the reaction I want to remind you of. If I treat an alkylated benzene with Br2 or NBS and light, usually NBS works better than Br2 for this reaction. 
that I can attach a bromine at the benzylic carbon. You should remember two things here. The benzylic carbon is the carbon that's immediately attached to the benzene ring. And in order for this reaction to work, the benzylic carbon in the starting material has to have at least one hydrogen attached to it. Guys, I thought of a great way to remember that a benzyl carbon is one carbon away from his fellow carbons inside a benzene ring. And that is by remembering this song. Benzyl, 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 benz, one away from his friends. Ooh. An allyl carbon also reacts similarly with NBS to a benzyl carbon. There's a great way of remembering what an allyl, allyl carbon looks like. He is one carbon away from uh, two carbons that are doubly bonded to each other in an alkene. So you can remember this song. Allyl, 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 al, one away from his pals. Ooh. You have to add the falsetto ooh at the end or else the song won't be as silly.